Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Today we will be talking about how to run correlation in SPSS. All right, so before I demonstrate how you conduct correlation analysis, particularly Pearson R in SPSS, just a brief background about this statistical analysis, okay, which I may have also discussed in my other videos about correlation. Correlation allows us to determine to what extent two variables are associated with one another. And we know that there are two um, possible directions in correlation. It can be positive and negative or negative. And when we say positive correlation, it means that as one variable goes up or increases, the other variable goes up or increases as well. All right, for example, the more stressed you are, the more that you feel anxious. So those two are um, positively correlated, all right? On the other hand, when we say negative correlation, as one variable goes up, the other goes down, or, or as one increases, the other decreases, all right? For example, the higher the anxiety, the lower your score in an exam. The more anxious you are, then the lower your score is going to be okay, when you take an exam. So that's an example of a negative correlation. Now, for this demonstration, I will be using this data set, the one that you can see on screen. By the way, this is not based on an actual study. This is just a made up data set for um, demonstration purposes. And here are some concerns that are questions that I encounter from the viewers whenever I talk about correlation. So. You may be wondering first why are the variable or why are the values so small? Okay, that's because I transformed the values into z scores. Maybe some of you are familiar with that. But can you run correlation if you're dealing with raw scores? Well, definitely. Transforming values to standardized values or to z scores is optional. You're not required to do that. Okay, but in this case, our data is standardized, particularly. It has been transformed to z-scores, which is why the values are very small. Another common question is that, how did I get these values? Okay, that's not really the focus of this video. But to answer that question, for example, in psychological research, in order for you to, to get these values, then you need to measure it using a certain instrument or a scale or a test. For example, you can administer a test that can measure depression, okay, in order for you to quantify it, in order for you to measure somebody's depression level, okay? So you can use a scale or a test to measure depression, to measure anxiety, to measure stress, to measure help-seeking intention. Okay, that's not really the focus of this demonstration, but I just answered that um, commonly asked question. Okay, for today, I'll be focusing on demonstrating how to run correlation analysis in SPSS. Well, as you can see, we have four variables on screen. We have depression, we have anxiety, we have stress, and we have help-seeking intention. For those who are not familiar with the variable, help-seeking intention is the extent to which you're willing to see a professional um, in mental health services in this case. For example, psychologists, psychiatrists, mental health workers, and so on. Counselors, for example, all right? So basically the idea behind this um, study you know, for our demonstration this, uh, in this video is that, is there an association between depression and help-seeking attention? The same goes for anxiety and help-seeking, stress and help-seeking. So in other words, we're answering the question, are you more likely to seek help from a professional if you feel greater amount of depression, anxiety, and stress? Well, one way to answer that if we're doing research is to conduct a correlation analysis, okay? So to run um, correlation, we can click on analyze, and then let's look for correlate and look for bivariate. Let's start with something simple. Let me do this again from the start. Let's start with something simple. Is there a correlation between depression and help seeking? So we're only concerned with those two variables. So what we can do is to drag depression to the right and the same goes for help seeking intention. And um, 
we're going to use Pearson. Okay, we can use Pearman if we are dealing with ordinal variables. If we're correlating ranks, for example, if we're correlating your rank in school and your rank in the board exam. Okay, so you can use a Spearman when dealing with ordinal variables. But since we're dealing with continuous variables, okay, we can use Pearson. Okay, we can choose two-tailed, all right, instead of one-tailed. All right, and then you, I, I encourage you to check on flag significant correlations. And I think we're ready to analyze, so let's click on OK. And now you can see on screen the results. So where can we find the correlation coefficient? Well, it's here. It's 0.578. And how do we know that that's the correlation coefficient? This is the number where our two variables intersect. Our first variable is depression. Our second variable is help-seeking intention. And they intersect around here. Okay, so that's the correlation. 0.578 or 0.58. So it's positive. We don't see any negative signs on the screen. It's positive. And um, we can say, so we can say that the more depressed that you are, the more that you're going to seek help. And so it's positive. And next thing that we should check is its significance. Is it significant? Okay. To, for it to be significant, the p-value should be less than 0.05. That's the rule of thumb in social sciences. In this case, we have a very small p-value. It's 0 0.000. It's lower than 0 0.01, and it's even lower than 0 0.001. So when reporting this, we can say there's a positive, there's a significant positive correlation between depression and help seeking. And then we write the p-value. P is less than 0 0.001. Okay. So in other words, the more that you feel depressed the more that you're likely to seek help from a mental health professional. All right, there you go. Now, um, let's level up our analysis. What if you're dealing, you? what if you're conducting a study with multiple variables, like in a thesis, in a research? So how can you, is it possible for you to correlate multiple variables at the same time? Well, the answer is yes. So let's do this again. Let's click on Analyze and let's click on Correlate. And then once again, let's click on Bivariate. Okay. Um, this time, I would like to enter anxiety and stress as other variables of interest. And then we're going to put help seeking again as, um, as we can consider it as an outcome variable. But in a correlation, technically, there are no independent, independent variables. That's one of the weaknesses of correlation. There is no true independent and dependent variable. Well, anyway, um, we're going to use the same settings. And let's click on OK. And now these, um, this is the outcome of the analysis. So as you can see, we have a bigger table this time. So let me help you with the interpretation. Let me just transfer quickly to PowerPoint. Okay, so now we can see on screen the, the correlation matrix. We call this a correlation matrix. And if you are a psychology major, or regardless of your field, they do encourage you to train yourself to interpret correlation matrices like the one you can see on screen. Because in research papers, authors, scholars present results using tables like the one you can see on screen. Okay. Now, um, how do you interpret what is in a correlation matrix? Just like what we did earlier, we we have we have to find where where our variables of interest intersect in order for us to determine if they're correlated. So, for example, just like earlier, how do we determine if depression and help seeking are related with one another? Well, let's look for their intersection. So they intersected at point five seven eight, just like earlier. And it is significant less than the p-value is less than 0 0.001. So just like earlier, we can say that there's a there's a significant positive relationship between depression and help seeking. But what about our other variables? 
Okay, what about the relationship between anxiety and help seeking? So I highlighted it with color green for it to be easier for you to, to find the, the correlation coefficient or the R. But how did we determine that this is the correlation between anxiety and help seeking? Well, this is where the two variables um, intersect. Okay, so this is help seeking intention. It's in the last um, row. And in, on the second column in our matrix, that is anxiety. So this is where they intersect with one another. Okay, and we can say that based on this um, coefficient and based on its p-value, there's a significant positive relationship between anxiety and help-seeking intention. And it is significant at p less than 0.001. So it means that the more anxious you are, the more that you're likely to seek help from a mental health professional. Lastly, what about for stress? So you can see here this coefficient, okay? This is where the two variables um, intersect, stress and um, help-seeking intention, all right? And we can see that the coefficient is positive, so the correlation is positive. And the p-value is also less than 0 0.001. So we can say that stress and help-seeking intention are positively associated with one another with p, uh, at p less than 0 0.001. There's a significant positive relationship between stress and help-seeking intention. And its p-value is p less than 0 0.001. Okay, maybe you're wondering what these asterisks mean okay in 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 publication and research papers asterisks usually represent its level of significance so if it's if it has one asterisk it means that the correlation is significant at um p less than 0 0.05 if there are two asterisks it means that it is less the, the p value is less than 0 0.01 and if there are three asterisks, it means that the p-value is less than 0 0.001. Okay, I don't know um, with SPSS, but in other um, statistical software, the results would show if it's less than 0 0.001 by indicating three asterisks. In this case, even if the outcome, even if the p-value is less than 0 0.001, for some reason, the number of asterisks is limited to two. But actually, there should be three asterisks in all these three coefficients that we just interpreted because as we can see, the p-value is less than 0 0.001, not just less than 0 0.01. Well, anyway, that's just a minor uh, concern. Okay, If you know how to interpret the significance, then um, there's no need for you anymore to check the number of asterisks. But um, I just had to talk about that in order to address some possible uh, confusions in the interpretation of what is in the table and what and it's uh, be between um, the number of asterisks and its significance level. If you're going to report this in a research paper, I do encourage you to use three asterisks instead of one. Uh, instead of two, I mean, because the p-value is less than 0 0.001. So that's just my minor concern about what is displayed in the matrix. Other than that, um, I can say that that's it you know, for how to interpret correlation results in SPSS. And I hope that you learned a lot in this demonstration. I do have other videos about other statistical analysis, conducting statistical analysis in SPSS. And I do hope to see you next time. That's it. Thank you very much.